Yes, good night here. <laughs> Oh, hallelujah. God is so, so good. Amen? Yay. Yes. Okay. Y'all can unmute and respond, yeah? Don't be shy. Amen. Y'all, all of you Amen. have three voices that God created. <laughs> Some old, uh, brother J.K. Han has a golden voice. So you must, <laughs> you must, must hear your voice more. Hallelujah. <laughs> okay. So, welcome everyone. Today is the day. Today is the day that the Lord has made and we shall be glad and rejoice in thee. Hallelujah. Today is the day of... Praise report. Oh. Wow. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Three points for you, Sister Siwe. <laughs> All right, today is another exciting day because of praise report, hallelujah. Always looking forward for them to share what God has done in their life, awesomely that God has moved in their life. And uh, there are so much of things that they want to share. I hope that I can give them like uh, more than an hour a person to share but <laughs> but uh, but they have to like you know shorten it edit 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 until maybe like 15 minutes or the most is like 20 minutes you know so it's okay just share just share because it's always wonderful and uh, to to testify you know to praise god because from your testimony it's through your testimony the lord's name is glorified we lift up his name may his name be glorified hallelujah so without further ado let our testifier speak more i speak less <laughs> okay i'm so excited looking forward to hear what god has done in their life all right today we have four four testifier Four person who's going to testify. Without further ado, I would like to um, welcome uh, Sister Sharon. Yes, yeah, Sister Sharon. Yeah, with the clap icon. Hallelujah. <laughs> okay, Sister Sharon, to you. Okay, thank you so much, this Y for this opportunity. I praise God that. Yeah by his goodness and faithfulness in our lives and his mercy and grace he's so rich in mercy and grace so before i want to start my testimony i want to pray first so i want to pray uh, dear heavenly father dear Abba father thank you for this wonderful night that you have given to us thank you for the reason why we are gathered here today to hear more and to know more about you and thank you father that you are a good good father to all of us you are so, you are love, you are always love, and you are the perfect, perfect example of love and humility. And Father, thank you for never leaving us nor forsaking us. And I pray and thank you for the Holy Spirit that is always there for us to comfort us, to heal us, to guide us. And I just want to take this moment, Father, to share, to share how good and great God you are. So... My testimony is about, I want to go back. So I will speak in English so that everyone can um, understand. So I will go back to my childhood. So when I was a child, uh, I was, uh, my father is a busy man. So he usually goes to work and he, he don't usually he don't usually stay at, the, at home. And my mother is also a woman that um let's just say she's not really around the home a lot of times when I we were young so I have two younger siblings so we are three in the family so uh I was so during that time I was exposed to at a very young age exposed to pornography because there were no guidance uh in the home about um using technologies so 
when I was young, I'm not, I didn't know that what I was doing is not right or it is wrong. So there was no one that will who guide me that time. So when I was exposed to pornography, I tried to copy what I saw on on the technology, for example, what I saw on lap on the laptop. So I tried it with other kids as well. So that time I didn't know that it was wrong. So and my family, my especially my father and mother, they are a person who is emotionally unavailable. So sometimes uh I didn't know there were times that they would just speak um without let letting us understand what they are trying to say so so they will just get angry for a little for little things that we don't understand why are they are angry so moving forward we are christian uh, my family is christian we, uh, while we were still young but a lot of circumstances have had happened and that's the reason why that my father never gave go back did not go back to the church my mother did not go back to the church as well so and my siblings all of us were really lost at time so i was really struggling with sexual um pornography when i was young at the, at the young age then at the age of 14 i I engage in sexual activity, which is because what I have seen in pornography, I started acting it out. And then a lot have happened that I am not really proud of my past. So it's really hard to heal from sexual morality. But God is so great and so he is so gracious that he is able to to set me free from that sexual immorality and 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 that is the reason why I fell fell into depression at the age of 18. I fell into depression. I had to go to the doctor to 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 seek a psychiatrist or psychologist. I even had to be admitted to the to the hospital because I was not really in the right state of mind. I experienced hallucinations. I experienced voices that condemns me, uh, voices that trying to tell me that you should kill yourself. You should, uh, you're hopeless. You are nothing. You are useless. So before I fell into depression, I isolated myself because that is the tactic of the enemy is to isolate you first and and let you feel that you are not loved, that you are rejected, that you are not chosen. So I really believe those lies for a lot of years because since my family is not also rooted in the word of God, so it's really hard to get encouragement from them as well. So for them, the stigma of being depressed is like it's like a drama. It's like you are overacting or you are trying to get attention, but they don't know what it feels like to be depressed and 2019 when I um 2019 that was the time that I decided to go back to church and then I realized that it was really the truth that set me free it was always the lies that will always bound us to our sin will always condemn us but it is the truth that will always set us free so when I came back to church and that was when I slowly um know God more I slowly know his word, uh, how much he loved us. So for me, depression can happen to both um, believers or un unbelievers, the righteous and the wicked. But the different is difference is if we are de that righteous are depressed because they are doing the right thing. For example, um Elijah, who is obeying God also um encountered depression but when he ran away from Jezebel and he said Lord um I am no good than my ancestors take my life already but in 
but God is so rich in mercy and love that that time Elijah um just slept and when he woke up there was already food God, God feed God feed him but for the wicked or the sinners depression is different from that for them you get depressed because you are doing that is not the will of God you you are depressed because of disobedience so that is um the reason but the reason why sometimes people um the reason why people uh commit suicide because of depression because for them there is no no hope there is no there's no light of the tunnel or there um it's already the end but when you believe in god when you believe that god can redeem you and you believe that god can make a beautiful story for you then you will have hope again because jesus died on the cross cross for us and that is our hope that is our salvation so for me uh, you can um overcome depression by acknowledging it um i'm um, giving it to the feet under giving it to under the feet of our father that god i am depressed but i know that you will strengthen me so i rather be depressed by doing right than be depressed by doing wrong and that is uh that is better for me so i just want to share a verse that will always encourage us because depression is all in the state of the mind but also it's also the attack of the enemy and our mind our mind is the battleground as well but we have this um promise from god that once you wear the helmet of salvation the breastplate of righteousness the buckle of truth and the sword of spirit you will not you will stand firm to the to the lies to the schemes of the devil so whenever uh to be honest today and tonight i'm also encountering anxiety and depression as well because sometimes the enemy wants to remind me of my past that you did this that you you did that but i declare i declare that god has already forgiven what i have ever done in the past because i know i did not do it and i will not do it again so um so this is what i have from god the word of the lord if we trust in the lord with all our heart and all and do not lead lean on our own understanding and in all our ways we acknowledge him he will make our straight paths so that is in proverbs 3 5 to 6 so it is a promise of from god that if we trust the Lord with all our heart, we do not lean on our own understanding, do not lean on our own will, and we instead we lean on God's will, then He will make our path straight. That's why some people are depressed because they want to take control of their life. They want to do what they want and to do, do their will, but not do but not surrender to God's will. That's why the reason why they are depressed. And it's also a byproduct of pride. That's why there is depression as well for those people. And this is the great promise that God has given to us. And Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. It is a promise that God will always give us rest. Um, rest not just not just sleeping. Rest. It is also a rest when we read God's word. Whenever we are down, whenever we are happy, whatever we are feeling, if we just read God's word, it is His promises, and it will, it is, and His promises are trustworthy and true, and His word is always alive. So, if we cast our cares on Him. Um, God is so happy that we cast our cares on Him because He cares for us. He really cares for us. That is in 1 Peter 5, 7. 
casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. And and the reason why we also want to there are also people that are depressed because they are looking to the left, to the right, not um um prioritizing things that do not matter. For example, they want to prioritize their business, they want to prioritize their um their the party and their friends or are um they're prioritizing things that do not matter or not really that important. But if we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to us. All these things will be added to you. That is Matthew 6 33. So this is a promise to go from God that you are depressed, the Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. Not just depressed, but if you are experiencing anxiety, if you are experiencing um pain, hurts, or even experiencing um some uh things that will will put down your spirit. He the Lord is near to the broken heart and saves the crushed in spirit. That is Psalm 34 18. And this is a promise from God about love. Because some people, some depressed people think that they are not loved, think they are rejected, think they are useless or do not have a purpose. And this is a great verse for me as well because the reason why I got depressed because I thought I was unlovable because I thought my the brokenness is, it, the brokenness that I felt is re, is a rejection, but people will reject you, but God will never reject you. Because it is a promise in Romans 8, 38, 39, for I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor death, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And for me, if we know that how much God loves us, we will never be depressed. If we know that even we are alone physically, we are alone, we don't see people around us, we are just alone. We know that we have a Heavenly Father who is always watching us, who is always caring for us, who is always interceding for us. He is a great, great Father for us. So that is some people, the reason why they they commit suicide because of unbelief because they think they are hopeless and i praise god for those who uh, who attempted suicide or because god has not yet is not yet done with you i praise god for that god is god is not giving up on us god will never give up on us he makes sure that we are always in his hand that we will not fall nor jump from from his hand and I I want to share another verse that we in John sixteen thirty three. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart; I have overcome the world. It is such a comforting um word from the Lord that He has overcome everything. He has even overcame death that we are able to trust fully in him we are able to to rely on him because in this world there, um there, there is a different feeling or there, there is a different peace that we have in god in jesus it is a perfect peace because he is a prince of peace so the reason why even though so many people trying to cover up their depression, for example, like partying, for example, smoking, for example, um, sleeping with other people, for example, um, um, talking to the psychiatrist, taking medications, but also Jesus is the healer of all. 
sicknesses and diseases and especially depression and I want to share this first this is my life first wherever I go whatever I do this is my life first in Isaiah 26 3 you will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you so those people who fully trust on God, they they will He will keep them in perfect peace because their minds are set. So for me, this is my testimony on how God helped me be before until now. Help me how to overcome anxiety and depression. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much, Sister Sharon, for sharing. Already uh, uh, very encouraged. And I really thank you for your sharing. I do not know whether this is this the first time you are sharing, but yes. uh, I just feel that uh, God will use you to share more, to set other people who have the same experience as you, same uh uh, yeah, same experience as you to you know they will also uh, be encouraged and they know that God is real. God be able. God is able to set them free also as what God has done for you. So I really thank and praise God. So Sister Sharon, ready for more is coming for you. You'll be sharing more and more. I think this is a very good platform for you to have a breakthrough to share even as it's your it's your first time so there will be second third fourth fifth you know so uh the lord will will will, will open doors of opportunity for you so just walk walk through walk through the door <laughs> hallelujah yes as this year is five seven eight four the year of the door so open and uh, the lord will open opportunity doors of opportunity for you and you just walk through it praise the lord and it's true god never give up on uh i think on all of us yeah um it's only we give up god but god will never give us up and god will never leave or forsake us that is so true and i really say amen to all the scriptures that you have uh, mentioned just now praise the lord and uh, it's always uh, great to see um uh, how actually God, you know, uh, bring us out, yeah, from darkness to the marvelous light of His. So I really thank you so much, Sister Sharon, and I really praise God for you. Yeah, we love you. Yeah, and I'm sure the Lord also will send people uh, around you that will also journey with you and to help you and to encourage you and to love you more and more with Jesus' matchless love. Hallelujah. Yeah, I pray that uh, when I go to Ilo Ilo one day, uh, I will meet up with you. Yeah, uh, I will I would really like to meet up with you, Sister Sharon. Yeah, thank you so much. God bless you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo! all right that is so interesting and exciting and motivated motivating and uh, whatever it is praise the lord it's all about jesus it's all about god nothing about us but it's all about god god allowed us to go through this certain experience because he he knows that uh, he will actually set us free and uh, we will always uh, testify by testifying this we actually will glorify God's name and we will shame the devil. Yeah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Okay. Wow. Right. Now we are going for our second one. Second testy fire. None other than uh, Pastor Jed. Everyone knows him. And I know that he has so much, so much to share. Pastor Jack, I think I will give you next time one hour to share. I know. <laughs> I know you have so much of how what God is doing in your in your life through you in the mission field. And it's always uh, so exciting to hear, you know. What is it? What has God done, you know, to you 
in the mission field. Wow. Praise so praise the Lord. And uh, indeed, uh, I'm really happy to, to, to know that uh, Pastor Jet uh, wants to share today because he, she, he has been like MIA, missing in action, you know. <laughs> but of course, his missing in action is good because he is doing God's work. <laughs> yeah, he's not like missing in action for nothing, but he is missing in action for the good cause that the Lord has blessed him uh, and his God's plan for him. So, Pastor Jed, uh title for tonight will be Redemptive Blood of Yeshua. Woo! Wow. <clears throat> awesome. Thank you. Okay, to you, Pastor Jed. Hallelujah. Good evening, everyone. Shalom. And it's good to be back again in the International God's Chamber. Um, good, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it's my honor and my privilege again, again to be here. I miss this family. So uh, I just want to thank the Lord, actually. Um, actually, the whole, <clears throat> the whole sep the month of uh, September is... Actually, I'm not actually here in Iloilo, uh, but but I praise and thank the Lord for many victories. Actually, um, that God is using me uh, outside Iloilo. Um, I praise and thank the Lord that um, we have this mission trip in Isla Gigantes in Carles, which is uh, really the Lord has moved powerfully and. I praise and thank the Lord that God has used the mission team to awaken the church, the uh, the, the churches there in Isla Gigantes and uh, one of the islands in Carles, uh, the Buena Vista Island, where the Lord has moved powerfully. Uh, deliverances uh, just happen, uh, and the Lord has fired up the church. And I just want to testify that you know. Um, you know, sometimes when the Lord told me to prophesy, actually, uh, I, I, I really am hesitant to release prophecy. Actually, uh, I get to wrestle with the Lord. Uh, Lord, I, do, I don't want to release actually prophecy. So that night when we got this uh, re revival fire service in Buena Vista Island in, in Carles, the Lord, the Lord just told me to prophesy actually. And then I said, Lord, um, I, I really hesitant actually to release, but um, it's just my mouth uh, is uncontrollable to release the word. And what the what the prophecy and the prophecy was released actually to the church and to the pastor, and then the pastor testified that it is exactly the words that uh, they need and uh, a confirmation. And also, um, the Lord told me to pick up actually. Um, the, the handpicked intercessors of the church there in the island. And then the pastor said, um, this is actually the intercessors of the church that you have picked. And the Lord told me to anoint them. So I praise and thank the Lord that um, the Lord is using me in, in this area also. And, and we praise and thank the Lord for the souls and for the healings. And actually, I praise and thank the Lord for the respond of the deped there, and the uh, I mean the school there, the elementary school and the high school. It is an integrated school that uh, were able to penetrate the school, and you know the feedback of the teachers are so overwhelming because they said that what you are doing is very good because also they have this part of the curriculum like moral recovery program for the student and we praise and thank the lord that the lord has just moved in the school even in the lives of the student and even when we got there in another island in isla gigantes norte or the northern side of isla gigantes where um we partner uh we partner a church there um the assemblies of god and the praise and thank the lord that the pastor um um uh, uh what do you call this the pastor go with us in the school in the elementary and high school and we praise and thank the lord that even the teachers they they they're very happy 
um, to to hear the gospel and we pray for the teachers as well and for the students and you know um, after we pray the teacher just open up that uh, they really need this kind of thing and uh, I was actually uh, amazed by the by the Lord what is the the works of the Lord there and even in the high school the high school um we were able to penetrate and actually my my classmate in the university is there uh teaching in Carles but uh, very far but I praise and thank the Lord that we are able to unite uh reunite once again and praise and thank the Lord that we are able to pray for him and pray for the teachers as well and in the last island actually the south southern part of the Isla Gigantes praise and thank the Lord that the, the people there, even um, most of them are actually um, pre preferably a member of Iglesia Ni Cristo. But I praise and thank the Lord that they are very open in the gospel. And really, the really the uh, the harvest field are really ripe right now. So I praise and thank the Lord that um, when I got in actually in this chamber just a while ago, Pastor Alianet prophesied about the net. And it's, it is coming about the revival. Actually, it is actually the revival in the harvest. Um, I just got the, the revelation also that um, there is a revival in the harvest, actually. The harvest, uh, the people now actually is just waiting for us uh, to arise and preach the gospel. So I personally thank the Lord. And uh, I thank you also for, for your prayers, this family. And I thank you. And... We have this 900 souls, teachers, uh, barangay, uh, barangay, uh, barangay people, and even the the uh, kagawads. And I praise and thank the Lord that um, those souls are being channeled in those churches, three churches. So I praise and thank the Lord for that. And one thing, and I was actually just... Uh, Arrived uh, yesterday, yesterday from Jensen, General Santos City. I praise. Uh, I thank you guys for your prayer because I was actually one of the speakers in a pastor conference there in General Santos City. Um, I praise and thank the Lord for your prayers because you know when it's my first time actually to um teach uh in a pastor conference. My topic is throne room worship and. I was actually kanang uh, na pressure bako, or I was actually pressurized because you know I'm facing um, senior pastors, bishops uh, in the conference. But I praise and thank the Lord for the wisdom, for the breakthrough, and you know um, one of the senior pastor and uh, senior pastor um, approached me and said said to me that what you are saying is so true and very relevant nowadays, especially for the worship ministries. Um, I praise and thank the Lord for the wisdom, actually, and for uh, for not letting me um, struggle with my, with my, with, with, with what language I will speak because General Santo City is quite different. They are speaking Bisaya or Cebuano, but I praise and thank the Lord for the wisdom because I was able to also speak Cebuano as well. Uh, Cebuano, Ilonggo, or English, Tagalog. So I personally thank the Lord for the wisdom, for the knowledge. And really, uh, the Lord just has just moved and the experience, the impartation of the fresh fire, especially for the worship teams. And for they, ha they have really upgraded their worship and they experience this throne room uh, worship encounter. And I praise and thank the Lord for the promotion and for the privilege to minister to the body of Christ in General Santos City. And um, for the coming for the coming months, um, praise and thank the Lord for the promotion again. So the Lord is moving. Uh, the Lord is really moving. God has no respecter of any person. He can use anybody. So I believe that the Lord will use all of us here in the chamber as a catalyst of change, as a catalyst of revival, as a catalyst of awakening. I really believe so because 
even the mouths of the babies, God will use it to be a prophetic voice for the, for the coming great revival. So I praise and thank the Lord that, um, you know, these test, uh, testimonies like this is really empowering. It it helps uh, it's, it help uh, it helps us to edify one another and I praise and thank the Lord for what God is doing now and for He is about to do greater things are yet to come and it is coming and I'm telling you people for uh, for God's international chamber that actually is how many last month and um just last week. I'm always dreaming about camels, camels, camels. And I just release it to you that the Lord will send camels for you and for your ministries. So thank you. God bless everyone. To God be all the glory. It is all for the Lord. Uh, we, we are careful to bring back all the glory and praises to Abba, Jesus, and Holy Spirit for the victory in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless us all. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Jack. I pray that uh, next month you will share again because you have been like, uh, I think this is only like uh, one third or only quarter, I think quarter of your of your testimony, of your of your sharing what God is doing, you know, through your, through your life in the mission field. So next month, yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Okay. Um, the third one will be Pastor Dax. Yeah. Uh, Pastor Dax. Okay. I, if I'm not mistaken, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, Pastor Dax is uh, from Philippines, but he is so so uh, he's uh serving in uh, bangkok right now yeah it's true okay yeah praise the lord thank you so much pastor dex for uh agreeing to to come in to uh to share with us uh what god is doing in your life and to you and uh, for this praise report that you are really so uh fire up for the lord i know i know i know very well you are really fired up just like pastor jet uh, I think everyone here, we are all should also fire up for the Lord. Hallelujah. So I'm not going to talk so much. I let you talk more, Pastor Dex. So, <laughs> <laughs> so over to you, Pastor Dex. Looking forward to hear your testimony. All right, Pastor. Thank you very much. Can you hear, hear me all right? Can everyone hear me? Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Now, before I will start, I would like to acknowledge Brother Max, Max Dirks. He's a Thai American. He's assisting me in the ministry here in Thailand. And of course, Pastor RJ, who is behind me right now. You can see him because of the, what's this, of the background. <laughs> so I'd like to acknowledge them. They're joining us actually today. Brother Max is actually driving right now. So... I hope he's be, he'll be able to, what we call this, um, join us uh, later on. But he's listening to us right now. Okay? Yeah, I'm listening. God bless everyone. All right. All right. There he is. There he is. He's, he's driving and he's listening. I'm on the road. Talking about multitasking, friends. <laughs> he's a multitasker. Okay. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, before I would like to start, uh, Pastor, um, who is this? Uh, Leonet asked me to testify about a certain um, a thing, okay? A specific topic that happened here. But I would like to share a screen, okay? A file. How do I do that? Should I share a file? Yes, you computer? can share. You can share. Yes, you share. Want to share yeah. Your screen, Pastor. Um, unfortunately, wait, I don't know how to share this file. It's a video <laughs> file, an audio file. Uh, what's called this? Anyway, it's here. My brother here is helping me. This is actually. Oh, yeah, I saw him. Is, can you see? Uh, yeah, you see that guy? <laughs> He's appearing behind me. Yeah, I saw him. <laughs> 
That's not a spirit or something. That's a <laughs> no. That's it's him. <laughs> the spirit of the Lord is upon you. Like I, you. <laughs> I, I, I cannot show it, but I'll show it to you through my phone. I'm sorry. I'm not so technical in this. I'm not very good at this. Okay. Okay. Anyway, here. It's hard to if see on the see phone, too, this, Pastor. Can you try to click the background click the first? Share. I have to the background. Yeah, you have to click the share oh. button, and uh, they have to give you share prop sharing. Yeah, share, share. <laughs> you have to allow me. So please, oh, please we, uh, we, help. We no, have no. even heard where we no, have the host over here. Everybody can share, actually. Yeah. yeah. Why don't you do this? Do you see the green color button that says share screen? I can see it, but still, I cannot find it. Okay. Great. Great. No, I have to look up or either bottom. And I, I take my Next time. All right. Uh, All right. No, where is it? Side. Hey, what happened to my videos? Go to your right hand side. My right hand side. You see the green color share screen. I see it. I see it. Share screen. Okay, and okay. computer. Okay. No, file. Second camera, basic files. Pastor, Pastor Dex, this is Pastor Roming. Pastor Meng? Uh, uh, you, you open first the uh, video. Oh, I'll open the video first or the files. Yeah, open, open the video first. Then on the array of, uh, along the array of mute, start video, and there is a share content there. You click that one. And then uh, you try to find uh, the video that you have later. Okay. And have to share, I have uh, share the picture first. Yeah. Then share content. Share content. Galing yan na sila sa mute start video, Pastor. Uh -huh. mga, po, mga participants, participants, share content, uh, isa lang, isa lang ah, okay, 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 participants. So, okay, ko, share, Na, ano, share, share content. Yeah. You click share, share content. Screen. Share screen, maybe uh, sa, mo, sa computer, but it's more on share content. Com computer audio, Thailand. When you go back to Thailand, God's power will be with you. Number two, he said, the owl. God will give you wisdom, added wisdom, so that when you minister, God will give you such wisdom that you'll be able to do what you need to do. Number three, he, she said, the horse. The horse is your calling, she said. I could remember that. Do you know why I could remember? Because I recorded it. <laughs> I recorded the prophecy. She said, the horse represents your calling. The horse represents your calling, she said. This horse, she said, represents your calling. It will be fast. It will be strong. You will run fast. Your call will take you to places. Something like that. She didn't know that, his, that her husband prophesied about being fast. Just like Elijah to run fast. Another thing, Pastor Lianet, you don't know about this? That do you know that I have a Chinese name? Ma. Wang Ma Yen. You know, we have a Chinese girl here in the church. Whenever she sees me, she would always cry out to me, Wang Ma Yen, Wang Ma Yen. Ma means horse. Any, any Chinese speaking <laughs> pastors here? Pastor, yeah. Ma is horse, right? Something like Man. that. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Mm. Pastor Janet, nothing is a coincidence there. And what she said, she said, you're going to run. Just like what her husband said. You're going to raise the dead. You're going to heal the sick. The, and the lame shall walk. The blind shall see. The mute shall speak. Those are the words she has spoken. The words that her husband spoke to me. And after that, ladies and gentlemen, after that, brothers and sisters, she again called me, took me to a corner. She said, I'm going to pray for you. She said, you are worried about so many things. You're worried about your finances. 
about your family, your church. Said, she said, God will take care of your church. God will take care of your family. And God will take care of your provisions. You know what she was saying? She said, the money is already in your hand. What she didn't know is this. That day, I had money in my pocket. Literally, the money was with me because when I received what we call this, I received that um, mandate from the Lord that I need to go back to Thailand. I convinced my wife to sell our car. The car that we use for our business, a car we use for our ministry, a car we use for my family. I said, Lord, if I'm going to do this, my family will suffer a lot, but I need, I need to do this, Lord. So I convinced my wife. The money was with me. It was not easy. Maybe to some of you it was easy. It was not easy for me. It was not very easy for me. Cut the long story short. I came here with those promises that the Lord is going to do something. And on that show, God did something. We didn't even we didn't even pray. We just believe. Do you know, ladies and gentlemen, that if you're going to look at, you know, probably Google it, <laughs> how many miracles did Jesus, uh, what we call this, did in the Bible? It was listed like 37 or 38 times. And all those, all those times that he performed miracles, he did not even pray for miracle, not one. I'm not advocating less of prayer, I'm advocating prayer here. What I'm saying is this, that the battle is won 